Good evening all. And welcome to tonight's um, webinar, TI Texas Instruments webinar hosted by TI Australia, not America or New Zealand or Singapore. We're here in good old Australia. Uh, tonight, today's webinar is Back to School Tips and Tricks with the TI-84 Plus CE with myself, John Bayment, and the lovely Isabel Hoadley, who not only is lovely, but she's very talented too. Um, as I said, my name is John Bayman. I teach mathematics to Year 7 to 12 students at Lachlan Catholic College in Darwin, where I use TI technology to help students make stronger connections in their understanding of mathematics. And as you can see by my, my giddy nature earlier, I couldn't control myself. So I'd like to introduce uh, our other Darwin-based TI trainer. Uh, that's uh, tonight. That's Miss Isabel Hoadley. Good evening, Izzy. Good evening. Nice to hear your voice. I'm glad that all, all the sounds working well. Um, so, Isabel is a colleague of mine at Lachlan Catholic College in Darwin, and is a very enthusiastic and dynamic teacher. Uh, I have to admit, I am somewhat in awe of her biography. Um, although completely justified when you see the professionalism she shows in her teaching and the respect her students have for her. Um, Izzy, it's fantastic to have you um, join us this evening and welcome. Thanks very much. Let's get down to tonight's webinar. And this was the brief that you would have seen um, from the other day. And thank you for joining us and hopefully you get a lot from this. So. This is what I would take from that, are those key points. We're going to focus mainly on the TI-84 Plus CE, the, the fantastic rechargeable color um, TI calculator. Some, hopefully some handy tips and tricks. Um, both Izzy and I, um, well, I teach year 10s and 8s, and we both teach year 11s and 12s, uh, all the SACE courses in Northern Territory. Um, so we do have some few tips that we'd like to share with you. Talking about the operating system, where we can get some free activities. All of us as teachers like some activities that we can use for free. Um, looking at the new operating system and things like the piecewise function. And two of my favorites, um, I couldn't do them out without them in my teaching classroom, is the TI SmartView. And for myself and my students is the TI Connect. So let's start. So how, first of all, we all want to be on the same page at the start of a year. There's nothing worse than either um, my smart view, this is what you're seeing at the moment, uh, the em full emulator of um, the handheld, not being on the right operating system, um, or students' calculators not being on the right one. And, and you can do something, or they can do something that you can. So it's really nice to be on the same, same page. Uh, if it's the handheld, then you would go second mem, uh, about, and the new operating system at the moment for the TI-84CE is 5.3. Equally, for the smart view, because you need to make sure that this is an emulator, you need to make sure the smart view is that you would also go to um, help about the smart view. And again, it will tell you that it's 5.3. So that's all good. We're on the 5.3. And if I change the view to a different model, so if I go to the TI-84+, Plus, and we can see that the pixels aren't as good on this one, as, as we know, is a much older calculator. I quite like splitting the screen and, and showing the um, other screens that can be shown on this one as well. They, they'll update and we can have those. Um, but if you did want to um, check on here, exactly the same place. Second mem, about, and there we go, 2.55. Different operating system. Obviously, it's like a, like a the operating system of, a, of an Android to some extent to um, the Apple, or more like a, a Mac to um, an iOS phone. Um, so let me move back to the TI-84CE. So we, we know what we need to have, and let's say that our students haven't got that. What do we do? Well, what I would suggest you do, first of all, is go to the TI Australia website. Uh, it's a, a website that's open to everybody to use. And on that main website, notice I'm on the site where it says Australia and New Zealand, is here in the bottom right-hand corner, it says about updating the TI-84 Plus CE. I click on that. It will then take me to this screen, tells me what's available to me. I click on the next screen. There we go. Um, I'm talking about the handheld and I'm talking about the smart view. If you're fortunate enough or you, you um, know a bit more about the TI Innovator Hub, and I would suggest if you haven't watched some of our on-demand videos or webinars, um, then you would click that as well. And we click to next. And on this page, all this is free. Uh, TI Connect, which I'll talk about in a minute for both Windows and Mac. 
Uh, what the TI Connect does is it gets the calculator talking to the computer and sharing information both ways. Here's the um, operating system for the handhelds, and here's the new updated TI Smart View. If you don't have the Smart View, you can get a 90-day free trial. So again, I'd recommend that as well. And when you've done that, so what I then do, uh, when you do, do download those, then I save them on my home screen. It's much easier for me to have all this on my home screen. Um, so when it's on my home screen, okay, a student comes along um, and wants to have their calculator updated. Obviously, this is a smart view, so that's not going to help me. But if I go to TI Connect, this allows me, it says here whether we have some connected calculators. So I'm just going to connect a couple of seconds. And I'm just doing that right now, two different calculators. There we are. And it's that classic thing. I've got a very old calculator next to me here. I tested it. Oh, Fury. I tested it a minute ago with Izzy, um, and it worked fine. And I was just thinking, oh my goodness, it's not going to work. So we can see that the TI-84 Plus is already on the new operating system. So that's fine. Uh, that's the handheld that I've got connected. Uh, if it wasn't, I would simply um, go to Calculator Explorer, and I would find the operating system, which is here and I would drag and drop it across. But it's already on the operating system. We can see though that the TI-84 Plus isn't on the new operating system. So how do we get that one? Some of your students may still be using that one. Um, still a great calculator, it does most of the stuff, it's just the pixels aren't as good, um, the, there's no color, we can't put images on it, uh, and there's a few other little things. But in the main, some of my students still got the 84 Plus, and I, I wouldn't, um, they don't need to change it. They've got the older brothers or sisters one, so they're staying with that. So how do we do that? Back to the website again. This time, we go to Downloads, just like um, an OS on a, on a phone. It lets us know that when it's on a phone or a computer. We go to Software. We choose the technology, which we're just looking at, not the CE, the 84 Plus family. And there's the operating system, and it tells you it's 2.55, and we would download that operating system. All right. The reason that there's no more modern version of that is because obviously it's been replaced with a with a newer um, handheld, so they, they won't keep for, uh, supporting that. But it's got everything that it needs to at that point. I do exactly the same, and I sa oops, sorry, I save it to um, my desktop. So let's just get that back up. I apologise for that. Um, so where is it? Here we go. Sorry. And here it John. is here. Yes. We just had a question. Um, what kind of other things can you download from the same, um, from the same uh, website? Awesome. Great question. Um, I'll answer that one. Thank you for that question. So I'll just finish this one, and then I'll explain that as well. Uh, so with this okay. one here, you can see that we're on the 84 plus, the older calculator, and there's Already, I've got it saved on the site, the um, operating system for that one. And all I do is just drag it across, and it will start uploading the operating system. My only concern is only the TI-84 Plus I want to do, not the 84 Plus here, because it's a different operating system. And I'm going to send it and start updating the operating system. My only concern, there we go. I was just going to say, my only concern is the battery on this calculator. This is one that a student said it doesn't work anymore, sir. And I got it to work and thought, this is laughing. This would be great for my... Uh, presentation. Um, and there you go. That's why it's not working anymore. Um, so it's a very old one, that one. But that's how you transfer it across. And you can see that actually it now is. There we go. Even that old calculator is now is transferring it across. So what else can we put onto it? Okay. Well, we can see that there's already several apps already on the handheld I've got connected. And you can see them all down through here. Um, in this bundle, the TI-84C bundle, a lot of those get dragged across automatically. But to answer Izzy's question, if you wanted other ones, then you would go to TI-84 Plus CE. And there are all the different um, apps that you can put onto your calculator. Um, there's the TI Innovator Hub that you need to use to, to talk to the Innovator Hub, uh, and also the Rover that's now available. There's the Vernier one, which is just one of my absolute favorites for working any Vernier probe on your calculator. Uh, the Transformations uh, graphing app which is very, very cool. Um, where's the other ones? The probability one is a superb one to have on your calculator. Um, this is a, is a must, is the polynomial root final simultaneous equation. And you literally click on them, um, 
download them as before, um, and it will download them in the corner down here. I then again just save it to my desktop or into a folder, and I would drag and drop it across. Does that explain it okay, Is? Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thanks. Any other questions at the moment? Uh, no, that's a lot, Yeah. Great. Please keep those questions coming in. They're really important to us. Um, it's really nice to get the feedback, but also we're here to answer your questions. This is a live webinar, not like an on-demand. Um, so it would really be nice to answer any questions you have. All right, and before I move on to Izzy, the last thing that um, can for frustrate teachers, especially new teachers to any technology, um, is uh, you know it doesn't work. It keeps not saying that it's available and everything else. So I've set this one up for it not to work at the moment. Okay, um, so if I go graph now, it will come up with some errors, All right, and this can be quite frustrating. Now, this is not a massive drama. This is just the calculator telling you there's certain things happening on here that um, we've got to work through. Um, so what um, I will look at, are these the main five, I reckon, are the main five that come up. Um, one is, and I'll just show you those five, okay? So I'm going to show you those five. Those are the main five that I experience with students. I'm going to show you a quick way after this, but I quite like students troubleshooting for themselves. So the first one says the window range. Check values in window. Um, looks like the max is bigger, smaller than the min, which wouldn't be possible. So quit that. We go to our window, and you can see that I've got them the wrong way around, or equally, I forgot to chuck a negative in front. All right, so that, now that error message shouldn't come up. Okay, dimensions mismatch. Check size of lists or matrices. Set plots off. Okay, so what's happening with this one is in stat plot, we've got a plot on here. Okay, but in our stat list for edit, there's an uneven number. So it's trying to do a scatter graph or scatter plot um, for an unequal number of values. Um, and that's a common thing that students can make mistakes with. The other thing that may happen, um, and this is very common, students go up here and go, oh, that was silly, I've got to clear this list. And rather than press clear, they press delete. Um, and, and we all panic and go, where's that list gone? It's just been deleted. And, and students end up with about one list, remembering never to press delete again. Um, it's not gone. Uh, if we press stat, set up editor, it will bring it magically back. It's just sort of shrunk down. Um, like as if you shrunk it down like an Excel document or pressed hide on Excel. That's the one I was looking for. Okay, so what we could do um, is fix it by either making them the same if we made a mistake and adding a value. Maybe in here I missed a value out, so I could go second function insert a number. Let's say it was six. That's one way of fixing it. Um, and the other way, obviously, is to turn our plots off. We could have turned them all off, and either of those would fix it. If I go to graph now, oh, no, something else. Comedy of errors. This is my favorite screen, um, if you can have favorite screens on calculators, um, because students normally just press quit. And I go, why are you doing that? It tells you um, where to go. Number two, go to the error. And this is a classic. Um, some of my students in the old days, um, <laughs> um, I say the old days, um, like to hide things down the bottom so their mates don't see them. They're, they're, the kids are using the calculators, and there's no problem, sir. There's nothing in my Y equals, but they've hidden it down the bottom out of the way. Um, obviously, I would never have done anything like that in my day. Uh, if we clear that now, there we go. Graph is good as gold. Fewy is don't panic. We're all good. However, there is a much quicker way. I like this way because it's sort of like a minor troubleshoot and, the, and you want the kids to think about it and think what could be up with it. Um, the other way is to reset. We can either reset the defaults or we can reset the whole RAM. So we, to do that, we go into mem. Here's reset. And we can either do default, so that returns everything to stat plots off, window back to minus 10 to 10, uh, all the colors back to normal, so we could press number two and press reset. And now all the defaults are reset, so that's like the, so if you now go to window, we're back to minus 10 to 10 in each direction. Um, our stat plots are all off, okay? But we still have um, information in our list that's not gone. Or we can sort of do a more serious reset if we wanted to, and that would be all RAM, which I'm not going to do, but we could do all RAM. And I reckon, there, if there's no other questions, Izzy, that's me uh, done for the first good. part. All Amazing. good. Well, I'll pass over to you, and we look forward to hearing what you've got to say about um, the new operating system and, and some nice little tips and tricks that we can 
we can uh, glean from you on how you teach in your classroom and how you maximize the use of the TI uh, calculator. Perfect. All good? Uh, it is beautiful, yep. I can see your screen, all yours. Lovely. Okay, so um, leading on from John, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what are some of the new things in the version 5.3 of the operating system. Uh, so you can see I've got some of them listed there. Um, and I'm actually going to start from the bottom um, and talk about the TI-84 test um, and exam mode. Uh, so I know that most of the Australian curriculum subjects, you don't actually need to be able to access test mode. Um, but if there's anyone listening from overseas um, where they do need to, I'll just chat a little bit about that. And the other, the other way I thought that test mode could actually be useful is now at the Year 12 safe, we have to do at least one test without a calculator. So if we were trying to scaffold that from, say, maybe like a Year 10 level, we could potentially implement doing a couple of tests on uh, a, couple, a couple of tests on test mode um, before transitioning to doing a complete non-calculator test. So um, to access test mode, I've got the instructions there. So when you turn your calculator off, um, hold down the arrow buttons on the on keys and then release, and you should come up with a reset option screen. So um, from there, we can select test mode in the reset options, and um, we've got all the default uh, systems there as well. Um, to check that the calculator is in test mode, you can try and access, say, maybe the program um, and the programs shouldn't be operational at all. From there, um, to get out of test mode, we can re-enable re all of the calculator files by either linking uh, two calculators together and transferring a file, um, or by using TI Connect, which John just showed before, and transferring a file from the computer to the calculator. Uh, so what I actually think is quite good about this is I really think that it um, takes pressures off, it takes pressure off the exam invigilators in them maybe not being sure whether a calculator has been correctly put into test mode or whether maybe a student's been able to take it out of test mode because there's really no way um, that they could take it out of test mode during a test. They would have to come and see you afterwards and get it um, uh, disabled or they'd have to do it at home by connecting it to their computer. Okay. From there, um, the next thing I want to talk about is probably like the biggest new function of um, the TI 5.3, and that's using the piecewise graphing function. So I'm going to graph uh, these equations that you can see here. Um, and what, um, if you were doing this in your class, I would encourage your students to input this instead of into y equals, say, if you were going to graph it, but actually input it into the home screen. Um, because there is a, like a little bit of a visibility issue in the y equals, which I'll show you in a second. All right, so to input it, it is a bit complicated. You've got to go to alpha and then um, input some quotations, and then you find the piecewise function under math, and it's right at the bottom of the math menu there. So we can put that in, and we want four pieces. We can press OK, um, and we should come up with our nice piecewise function here. So our first function that we're putting in, sorry, is, um, uh, Sorry, I've just got to put my quotations back in again. So the first one is x plus 5, um, and then we're looking where x is less than or equal to negative 8. So to access the inequalities, we go into test. Uh, so we're looking at the last one, which is the less than, and I've done this in the wrong way. So we're looking at negative 8. Again, the last one, uh, where x is less than negative 8. And what I really like about this piecewise function is you can actually input it exactly how students would see it um, in a, uh, in a, from a textbook. So for example, for this next one where we've got sine of x plus 3, uh, we can actually input this inequality exactly as seen there. So from negative 8, um, we're then looking at less than again, x less than negative 2. Izzy, there is a slight typo in the first one. Um, yeah, I, got, I thought. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, crikey, you're just showing people where it is in test. I think that inequality is one of those those classics that, um, you know, is so obvious, but you're going, where is it? Um, and in test, yeah. it's um, quite a useful one. Um, I know Karen Moore in the past has done some really nice um, demonstrations of using the test function, um, yeah. especially in lists. Uh, in the stack function, and also you know, when we use Innovator, there's some nice stuff that you can use with tests. So 
that's a nice place to know where yeah. it is. I have to say, like, even even as a, math, a very confident math teacher, I find, I don't know, inequalities, there's just something about them. Um, I think it's just, I'm just, I don't have a great sense of direction. Which have I, have I done it wrong on the screen, John, or on my, ex, on, on my PowerPoint? Which one have I done wrong? Hey, it doesn't matter. You're doing a, we're, we're seeing it and we, we now know how it okay. works. That's uh, a great, you're doing a great job. No pressure uh, now. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to leave it. When I put it into my function, I'll see where I've done it wrong anyway. Um, okay, so from there, we've got x squared. And I'll just show you how you can use, um, just instead of having the two inequalities there, how we can show it using the conditions menu of the test function. So when we go into conditions, um, for this one, we're looking at where x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than 3. So that's the seventh one down. Um, and we can just put in 3. So you can see you can put it in in two different ways. Um, and it just depends to the students which one they prefer. Um, and then my last one is log of x, um, where x is greater than or equal to 3. OK, um, from there, we want to be able to input this into the y1. So the first thing we have to then do is to recall um, our y variable. And I'm going to access that using the shortcut from alpha f4. Um, press enter. Then we have to close our quotations um, and I'm going to store that under Y1, so again using alpha F4. Okay. Once I've done that, then I'm going to go into my Y equals, I'm going to check it's in there, um, looks great. And um, then when I, um, but you can see that, this is what I was talking about before, you can't actually, if you're looking at say more than two functions in that piecewise, you're not going to be able to see um, all of them in the screen at one time. So I do think it's handy to put it in um, uh, in the home screen instead. Okay, from there, we're going to graph that. Um, and I can see exactly what I've done wrong now. Um, so I'm just going to bring that down and change. Change that first inequality. Oh. There we go. <laughs> so there okay, you go. You so had it right. It was the typed bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and actually, what's good is um, about actually making that mistake is we can see that if you input piecewise functions, um, but your first inequality um, continues on, it will actually only graph that inequality and not all of the others. Um, so that's actually probably like well, let's call it an intentional mistake. Um, all right, so now, oh gosh, I'm probably going to have to put that back in again, aren't I? So, oh, got all the way to the end. Okay, so from here, press enter, that should be done. Now it should be correctly put in and beautiful. Okay, so we see our functions, which I have done. Um, on my PowerPoint here as well. Okay, from, okay. from this, um, now if, uh, say for example, I wanted to graph my derivatives of these functions, which I think, I think is really, really nice, and um, for anyone from South Australia who might be listening, I'm planning on doing the roller coaster um, investigation at Year 12, um, and I'm going to encourage students to try and use this piecewise function to actually graph and then make the derivatives um, of their functions so they can see how it all joins up um, and how it looks on their calculator. Um, from there, if we go into y equals, um, I can input um, into uh, my y2. I'm going to use the alpha f2 key um, and function 3 and put in, I want, I want to use the um, derivative of that y1. So I'm going to alpha f4 y1 and I'm looking at where x equals x. Now if I graph that, we can see we get the derivative of each part and I think that's also a really nice conversation with students to say, okay, we'll look at all these different functions and how they have such distinct different derivatives and why that might be the case. Um, and they can see that all on the same screen rather than just graphing um, individual functions. Um, from here, um, I can see that that, yeah. I was just thinking as well, um, I forgot to mention it when I was
talking earlier, but um, we talked about how we could show the camera, um, how the camera can work on the smart view. Um, yeah. Especially, I was just thinking with that, with that um, investigation that you're talking about with the roller coaster and making their own um, curves that fit. That would be a really nice use of using the camera, which um, could you just show people quickly how, how that works? Um, so just taking a photo uh, of the screen. Um, so just, using TI Connect? No, no, oh, with what sorry, you're on sorry. now, yeah, you obviously no, can take a using, photo. Using yeah, all good, sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so with this, we've got this photo function, so we can use that and take a photo of the screen, and you can see that that perfectly captures um, the um, calculator screen. Okay, so then uh, they can what you're use saying that, is put obviously, that into their... Sorry. Continue. <laughs> So what we're saying is, obviously, what you're saying is, if they were doing that on their handhelds and they connected their handhelds up using TI Connect, they could do a similar thing. But that would that would really add a nice bit of weight to their assignment. And, and you're staying with the same piece of technology to link all that through. It would look really quite pretty, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So from here, I can see that. Sorry, I'm just going to um, not save that. Um, but we can see here that. Um, we have this line's green and it's a bit thinner than the blue line. So I just want to change that to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so to change the colour or the thickness of your lines or even to change the texture, um, we highlight that there and I'm just going to change that all the way back to red and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker so it looks a bit nicer. Okay, um, I won't bother about doing the second derivative because I'm just a bit wary of the time, but we'll move on to the next um, new thing once this is finished thinking about the derivative. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm just going to make my screen a little bit bigger for this, is using the um, transformation graphing app. And we, what you can do with that now is um, plot two different functions at the same time. So to access it, we go into app, and then it's all the way down the bottom. Um, under transform. Um, and I actually just used this yesterday. We're doing um, tree graphs with my year 11s. And so we were talking about um, what effect changing the amplitude of a trig function would have. And so um, I got them in Y1 and Y2 um, to plot um, A sine of X. Um, and uh, I got them to do this first and looked at, all right, well, changing that A value changes your amplitude um, and changes the minimum and maximum value of your function. Um, and then I wanted to, them to compare that with having a negative amplitude and what effect that has. Um, so then we also plotted... I like the double negative. Thanks. Yeah, well, that would be a good one to do. <laughs> so then we had... Uh, so we plotted A negative sine of X. Um, and we graphed that. Um, and I mean, the, the transformation graphing app really reaches its like maximum potential when you get it to animate and move. And so students can really see um, how changing that value works. So just quickly to do that, you go to setup. Um, I want to turn the trail on. Um, we want it to play. And we're starting at A equals 1. We're increasing by 1. But I want my maximum to go up to, say, about so now when I graph that, it's going to compute each screen. Um, and we can see really nicely how that changes. And students straight away, they're like, oh, well, if it's negative, then instead of going up first, it goes down first. And that's exactly what you kind of want them to be able to see. And it's so much better than me just telling them in class. Okay. So, um, oh, just quickly, just um, one of the other things I had to go with my students is how you can actually get out of the app and how you stop it moving. So to stop it moving, we just have to press enter to get it to pause. Um, then we go back into y equals and then up the top to quit app. And that will take us out of transformation graphing mode. Okay. Uh, and the that's next like thing the... Can... Sorry, I keep busting in, but I was just thinking that no, the linear fine. programming app um, does something very similar. When you use that linear programming app, students think afterwards, well, hang on, what's going on? And they, they forget that they're still running this app. This app's constantly running, and they have to quit the app to, to, to break out of it. Um, it's very, like you just showed, it's very easy to do. Yeah, well, uh, that was exactly what happened today, was we went to then do something different today, and they're like, Miss, how do I get it to stop? It's still going. Um, how do I put in something else? And I was like, oh, okay, all right, well, this is how we quit an app. So they really have to know how to do that, because otherwise um, they do miss it. Uh, um, the next part is uh, from drawing tangents. 
Um, and this is something which we've always been able to do, but we can now input the tangent into um, the Y equals. And I was saying to John before that I'm currently doing this with my year 12, but the first test they're doing is their one non-calculated test of the year. So I'm um, dying a little bit at, at them having to do all of this by hand, and I'm just kind of at the moment refusing to do it because um, I'm worried that it's so nice and so easy and so functional um, that they they then won't ever want to do it by hand and that it will just destroy them in their test. So if I input my function, which is 3x plus 4, um, and we can sketch that, um, I'm going to find my tangent where x equals 0. So I go to second, draw, um, and we use, sorry, function 5, which is the tangent function. Um, and I'm just going to draw, it's already on 0, so I'll draw my tangent there, um, but just to set it up, we can go to menu, so press the graph button. Um, I want it to be a different line, so it's not the same as my actual function, so I'll, I'll do this one in red. Um, again, we can change the thickness of the line, and I want to store it into by 2. So from here, and press OK, and there we go. All right, so we can see that when x is 0, we have a tangent of um, negative 3x plus 4. Um, and it's also quite nice, I think, for students to, um, if you if you were doing this, say, at year 11, um, when they're starting to learn calculus and see what that looks like, is to draw multiple tangents through and get them to look at how that gradient changes um, using something that they know, which is a linear equation, compared to something which they don't know, which is um, calculus. Okay. And as you taught um, me yesterday, you see, um, I've known that that draw tangents been there for a long time. It's always been temporarily drawn in the past. Um, you uh, you showed me yesterday how you you clicked that little uh, F5 and um, you got much more control over it now through the through the menu, um, which is yeah, fantastic. It, yeah, and you can store all of those as well. So then we go into there and we can see that that um, equation stored in Y2. Um, all right, I'm just going to delete those because I know the next thing that we're looking at is um, quick plot. Um, and quick plot is uh, really fantastic. And again, it's not a new function on the calculator, but I just wanted to go through how we could kind of use it. Um, and one of the differences is is that now you can just use quick plot without finding a linear regression. Um, so to get to quick plot, we're going to go into stat, calc, and again with all of these tonight, it's at, very, at the very, very end of the um, calc menu. Um, and I was talking to John at school about this um, and saying that I really like quick plot, even using it, say, in like a middle school where we're looking at linear equations and how we can kind of make linear equations a bit more interesting, add in maybe a bit of a competitive element um, and get them to use the technology. So I've put in here a table of values, which I guess is kind of like your traditional textbook question where students would plot each of those sets of coordinates, um, draw their line, and it's quite going to involve a lot of additional thinking for them. And maybe how we could kind of change that question is say, well, what if we want to plot a linear relationship that has a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1? And how can we get that as accurate as possible? So we could use quick plot. If I press enter on there, and now we want to drop some points. So we want a y-intercept of negative 1. So put that in about there. And then we want our gradient of so students can kind of move the cursor around and uh, try and get that to fit as closely as they possibly can. And obviously if you wanted to, you could go into to format and add uh, grid lines if you wanted to as well. Um, so yes. making it easy for them, but um, it's quite nice for them to have to do it this way. I think it's a lovely little feature. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So like I said before, one of the things that you couldn't do in QuickPots before was just dropping the points without um, fitting the equation, but now we can. Um, but just, just for in the context of this question, I do want to fit the equation. So I'm going to go back into graph. We want it to be a linear equation, so second one. Um, and we can draw um, that through there. And I think this is, again, like a really nice kind of talking point for students to say, all right, well, if we had more points, would it be more accurate? Would it be less accurate? How could we make it more or less accurate? Um, and getting, oh, what if we had a horizontal line? What would our gradient be then? Um, what if it was a vertical line? Um, and getting them to kind of um, think a bit more deeply about, you know, what a linear equation actually is. Okay, we can also store those values into our list. 
um, into the stat plot um, and also into Y1. So I'm going to store all of that. Um, and then we can also get students to compare, um, say, with their table of values from their textbook and what they've actually got here. So we can see how close are we um, um, and do a bit of a comparison between something that has maybe a gradient of 2.1 and a gradient of actually 2 and what the difference is. Okay, um, I'm just going to delete all of this. And it's really important that people who are watching, um, especially watching it live, realise that um, this is it is going to be recorded and it's available on demand so that they can control um, when they pause it or when they rewind if they miss something um, because we're trying to keep the pace high for this. So you're doing a great job, Izzy. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, the second last thing I'm going to talk about is just um, the inverse normal and binomial. And I'll just make my screen a bit bigger because I'm not actually going to um, show this on um, the smart view. But um, we've got inverse binomial, which is a reasonably new function, um, which works just the same as inverse normal. Um, and we have inverse normal. And the difference from this is that in, in the past, we've only been able um, to find the um, less than area, whereas now we can find a central area and also um, a greater than area as well. Um, and actually, maybe I will just kind of quickly show you how this works. So if we go into distribution, um, and we can see there's the inverse normal. Um, say we have, I'll just change this a little bit. So say we've got an area of 0.5, our mean is going to be 10, and we've got a standard deviation of 6. And say we want to find what our central values are going to be, we can paste that. Um, and we can see that we get both our lower bound um, value and our upper bound value of our normal distribution. Isn't that great? Yeah, oh, it's just an absolute lifesaver, <laughs> I think. Um, and yeah, it's just, just so much nicer than having to do one minus the area if you wanted um, an upper yeah. um, value. Okay, and then um, screen a little bit bigger. Um, from there, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is using um, the sequence menu. And that's just changed slightly, as you can see here, from having, you're now able to have a sequence of n plus 1 and a sequence of n plus 2. And I'm, I'm going to go through this because John's actually going to use this same sequence when he takes over again in about in a couple of minutes. So to go into sequence menu, we go into mode and then tab across until we've got a sequence. And now when we go into y equals, we should see, delete all of this, we should see our sequence menu here. Okay, um, in uh, this second part, I'm just going to input in, you can see when I was doing this before, I was in n plus 2, but I'm going to put it into sequence n, um, cos of 2, and to access the n, you just use the x button, 2n minus 1, um, and then I also want to have this part of 3, and something I just learned today is there's actually a new, uh, there's two different ways we can access the fraction key. Um, so the first, well, sorry, three different ways, but I'll show you the two easiest ones. So the first one is that we can go to alpha and F1 and you'll see your full fraction menu there. However, if we wanted, sorry, if we wanted an even easier way as well, we can use alpha and then the XPC to N button and that'll make a fraction um, for us automatically. So in there I'm going to put pi over 3, and then close both sets of brackets. All right. um, now, I don't need to put in um, a value for the, first, uh, for the first condition because I already said that my n minimum is going to be 1. So I can go straight to graphing that, and I'm just going to look at my window. Uh, my n max is going to be 12 because we've got n equals 12 in our question. Um, and I'm just going to change my y minimum min and my max to negative 2 and 2. Um, and we can see we've got our sequence there. If we wanted to look at it in a bit more detail, we could, and see what our actual x and y values are, we could go second in table um, and we'll see all of our values in there all the way up to um, n equals 12. 
Um, what's new about this function, like I said before, is that we don't just have sequence of n, we can also take the sequence of n plus 1. So if we're looking at that, I can graph that again. And even further, we can graph n plus 2 as well. Okay, and I think that's me done, John, so I'll pass you on for doing a little bit more sequences. That was fantastic. Thanks, Izzy. Um, yeah, I have to say that was a nice little trick I didn't know about was actually um, the uh, alpha um, XT feeder button. That's, that, that was great. So thank you for that. Um, uh, really was well superb. Uh, so carrying on from what Izzy said, um, and, and thanks, Izzy. Uh, one thing that um, when we try and use the smart view, what can happen sometimes is that uh, we know that menu is F5 here. Sometimes the students can get a bit confused. This was one that Izzy was talking about earlier with the, the tangent. Uh, we can change the view. If you notice down here, let me just make it uh, full screen for a second. If we notice down here, we've got some other features that we can add. Uh, one of them was the camera that Izzy talked about. Um, but one of them is to turn off the side screen. Um, and therefore, we can see that this is much more like the students use. Um, what I do a lot of times in my class is actually use it like this and just have it by the side of whatever I'm working with. Um, so it's much easier to run it in that system. And then we can see the menu happening by the side. So this is sort of stays there all the time like a next one. And on my smart board as well, I can actually just touch the calculator on the screen rather than actually um, having to do it any other way. So um, that's, a, that's a really um, nice way to put it as well. Uh, so I'll put it back and make it a bit bigger. Um, also, we can add the, the spare screens, like I showed you before on the 84. Um, so that's quite nice. And, and also, if you were trying to run a tutorial where you wanted to record something or students wanted to follow, you can actually have the history of all the buttons you press. Um, you can change where that is. But it's quite nice to um, show the buttons you've pressed along the way to get to what you're doing. That's quite a nice little feature as well. So there's some nice little extras. But following on with what um, Izzy said, um, this was a question, not Izzy there, um, but the question that uh, came up, and this was a question um, from a uh, past exam, I was doing it with the students. This was a, a non-calculator um, test question. Um, so they had to work it out with that, um, just using a good old pen and paper. Um, and the answer is zero. And what I wanted them to do was to think about, well, why is it zero? And you can see on Izzy's um, sequence graph that it was bouncing between uh, one and minus a half, I think, isn't it, Izzy? Is that right? Uh, yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. So we can also, I was thinking, well, how else could I get the students to, to see what that is? Well, well, one way, and I'll just turn this calculator back to that view, uh, one way uh, in normal calculator screen is to type this in the fraction. Obviously, the students had to work out that these were the, the theta and the uh, n on uh, 12. So. Now knowing Izzy's little trick, there's a fraction button. Um, sin 2, n we know is 12 times 12 uh, times the uh, theta, which we know is pi on 3. We can do another fraction on top of a fraction. So that's going to be OK. Pi on 3, and I have to say I am making a mistake here intentionally. So if you're watching and shouting at the screen like, um, something from who wants to be in the air, it's OK. Um, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you very much for caring about me. Um, so and if you didn't know the mistake, then um, oh, we're actually, I, I lied. There's no mistake, because um, I'm actually in radians. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what the calculator comes up with. I thought it was in degrees. Oh, you know why that was, Izzy? Because do you know why I went back to radians, Izzy? Uh, because it was because you reset it. I reset the defaults, and the default is radians. There we go. There you go. Well done. Top of the class. Um, this may not give us zero. Um, um, and this um, example would know that sometimes it doesn't give exactly zero uh, because there's rounding errors that go on. And obviously, we, we teach our students what that number really means and, and how to actually get it to be that, um, that really that's zero. Um, another nice little feature that we could have done um, is, oops, sorry, used uh, the fraction button again. And we could store that value. OK, pi on 3 as a variable. So if we store it as theta, uh, in this case, let's just use t to represent theta, um, then that number is stored. And if we go now up and copy the equation that was used before, and this time go back in and we'll delete that, we'll get rid of that, and we'll add t in there, alpha t. 
and come back into here, delete that, and alpha T. Then we will now see, oh, that it will still give us that. Okay, well, that's very interesting. Well, let's try a third way. Um, what I was thinking and the mistake I was thinking I would make would be that I'd be in radians. Uh, let's make this a bit of a bigger screen. That I'd be in radians. And if I was in radians, then, um, sorry, in degrees, then it would come out incorrect. So if we do that now, we can only run that. We could run, see that it doesn't come out correct. Um, so that's a bit annoying, but we can actually get Renner. We can still run it in the degrees. Renner, we can still run it in the degrees mode. Uh, two ways to do that. Um, probably what I would do is back up here, when we did this originally, I would, and, and I think this is a nice little feature that's overlooked, um, and that is, be, is just actually getting the students to put the units after the angle that they're using. So the units after that would be uh, radians. So second insert radians. Now where's that? Where's in angle? And there's radians, three. Um, nothing will change in here, um, although it does say it converts to 60 degrees. That's quite nice. And if we go back up now, so it's going to actually convert it. It's in the degrees mode. Um, it converts it to 60 degrees. And there we go. We got our, we got our zero. Woo! Panic over. We got there eventually. Um, all right. I'm just going to shrink this back down a bit so that I can see what else I'm working with. Um, which um, isn't going to come up fully. So also what I was looking at was thinking, well, how else could I do it? So um, what we could also do if we wanted to check it and show the students why it gives zero, because I think sometimes when students get zero as an answer, it's a bit off-putting. There's all this calculation and get zero. How is that possible? That doesn't seem, um, doesn't seem right. So what I'm going to do is use list and spreadsheet, a bit like Izzy's um, sequences thing. I'm going to use list and spreadsheet. Up to the top, press clear rather than delete. Let's delete that information in there. I'll clear that information in there. And I want to type in the numbers, well, 1 to 12, because there's 12 terms. Um, to, go, to do that, I could just type in 1, enter, 2, enter. But I like to be a bit more efficient. I'm going to come up to lists, across to um, sequence, number 5. And it's just simply straight values. I've, I've got it quicker, but I, I quite like showing the students just the straight values. So let's clear that. Let's just have. The expression is just x from 1 to 12. That all looks good. Enter. And there we go, 1 to 12. The reason I, I quite like this, I want them to see that that's the number of terms. If we come across here and we come up to list 2, then um, we could then um, do 2n minus 1 if we wanted to, to make sure that we got these values. Or we could do 2n minus 1 of this palm 3 and see that those are the correct values. Uh, so let's do it bit by bit or um, a few things at a time. Um, so up here we're going to do 2 times these numbers, which is list 1. Like I said, I could do all this in one hit. I just quite like seeing the bits of it. Um, those are all those numbers. Okay, that would be in here. And we would then, and that's correct because obviously uh, the last one, the 12th one, if I scroll down, should be 23, which it is, which is 23, and there's that pi on 3. Um, but now let's, let's, let's miss all that and let's do it in one big hit. We're going to do this for each term. So each term, um, we're in degrees. So let's change my mode to radians, back into stat. Uh, we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to do cos. Um, we, could add, we could just type the formula in like this. So why don't we do that? 2 with n. n is the term, so that's list 1. Take one, close bracket. Um, no, I need to just add another bracket because I want to do cos of everything. So I'm going to second insert another bracket. And this would be a nice thing for the students to troubleshoot this. Uh, times, and it's going to be pi on 3 or 60 degrees if we're in different setting. Um, second pi on 3. And what do we get? There we go. And therefore, students can see. Oh, I thought it was. I did wonder if it was the other way around. We can see that. Yeah, no, um, I, 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 checked, I checked after. Sorry, I checked after you asked, and I was going to say, but anyway, yeah, it's the other way around. And it is. <laughs> so we can see that the halves cancel out with the negative ones, and these halves cancel with this negative one. These two halves cancel, and this little half down here, and the first half cancel with the last negative one. And again, we could graph that if we wanted to. Um, stat plot. Um, of list one and list three. Um, 
I don't like this function because it's a little bit lazy, but for short for time, I'm going to use it. It's a bit hypocritical. Number nine, there we go. And there's the same graph that Izzy had before. Um, so that's a, a really nice thing. Uh, linking back to what Izzy was saying about the transformations um, graph um, and getting the app for that. Um, here it is. I've just um, gone to the website where I showed you before, and the transformation app is there. So I'll just go back a screen, and we can see. Come on, computer. There you go. There's all the ones I showed you before, and there's the transformations on. Where are we? There it is. Okay, that's the date it was made or updated. Um, I saved that to my desktop, uh, which is over. Here. Oops, which is over here. And I've just saved it to there. There it is, the transformations one. And if um, it's already on my smart view, but if I had a calculator that didn't have it, notice there's a transformation for a CE, so it wouldn't work on the 80, just the 84. But again, I'd go here. My CE is on. Um, and you can see that it's already on here. I actually do already have it, so I don't need to, but if I didn't have it, I would simply drag and drop it across. Um, a really simple, nice feature, and, and students can also share that if they want to, the apps between each other, um, and I'll just show you on the smart view so you can see, using the link function. So if you've not used the link function, I would suggest you do using the mini USB to mini USB cable, and it won't work on the smart view, but we use this link function here. So you can't see what I'm talking about, so what I'll do is go back to Smart View, oh, sorry, to TI Connect, and I'll press it on my handheld, um, and I'll show you it on there. So I can take a screenshot of that, of my handheld, it's my handheld now, and that's what it will look like. So you'd go into here and choose the, the app. If you kept scrolling down here, you'd find the app that you want to send up here. This is a photo, so I can't do anything else. Okay. Or if we were wanting to receive, then we would arrow across to receive, and the other person would receive it. Um, just make sure that the direction of the mini USB goes from A to B, not from B to A. Um, you'll see when you see the cable. Um, and as I uh, rudely butted into Izzy and said, when we have these images, they're really powerful in their assignments um, because if they do have a Word document and they got these and they want to use them, they can simply um, choose the ones they want and simply drag and drop them across into an assignment and work with them um, however they want, which is just superb. Um, very quickly, uh, moving on, we, um, we're going to talk about matrices. This is a question from the Revision Guides of MASA. Um, the Northern Territory and South Australia, as I said, work together on the same exam board. So this is made by um, MASA Association of South Australian uh, Teachers, and I really love these resources. I've used them for many years, and they worked really hard last year to give it to the new, um, the new um, course outlines. So well done for doing that. Um, so I use those. And if we go to if we go to a calculator, if we want to do those questions that were there a second ago, then there's two ways of doing it. A quick way of doing it to get those matrices up um, would be to quit that for sure. Uh, let's clear that. Is to go into matrix, which is F3, and we can quickly type in a matrix. Can you remember the matrix? Is it what it was? Not the film. What it was? There you go. Two, uh, no. Sorry. Arrow <laughs> Yeah, it was a very poor joke. It wasn't even meant to be a joke, which is even worse. Uh, maybe, maybe my unintentional jokes are even better. Oh, that was a bit... Um, I was on a roll so much, I wasn't even paying attention. So zero, <laughs> minus one, arrow across, and let's just delete that. Okay, so that's no dramas. I can add my squared on the end, which is what I was talking about doing, um, like so. And we can get that if we wanted to. We can arrow up and copy it again and change it to cubed. So that's a much quicker way of doing the matrices if you want to. Um, the other way is to go into matrix and then type edit. Always go into the wrong one to start with. Type it in. Really like them having to choose the size of it. Uh, we got two, zero, minus one. Make sure the students don't use takeaway, one. Um, the reason I like this format um, is then when they go to use the matrix, they actually type in, ah, I should have used B, no, that was a bit foolish. Um, <laughs> I quite like, I won't change it now, if, I'll be okay, my OCD will be able to cope. If you're a lazy student in a test, you wouldn't use B anyway, you just use one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Izzy, um, thanks for that. And, so that's what I would do there, yes, Izzy. Oh, I was just going to say as well, you could also store that original matrix as a variable as well, couldn't you, if you were then going to do the squared and the cubed? That's a great question. 
Um, I hadn't thought about that. Um, so let's come back to this one here, which was just typed in. Let's um, delete that. Um, I would have thought you should be able to, so let's just try it. Let's store it as B. That will make me feel a bit better. Yes, yeah, so he doesn't like it because it's not a data. Okay. It's not a piece of actual data. I did wonder that, um, but uh, and it's saying, no, you can't. There's the go-to again. It's saying, look, you can't store it as a, one variable. It doesn't make any sense because there's, there's four variables in there, and it's a matrix. Um, yeah, so that doesn't work. Um, a really one of my favorite features of the, uh, the new TI-84C is the ability to have images on it. Uh, there are some already pre-installed, if you didn't know. So at the moment, we've got a graphing screen there. Let's go um, zoom standard. We've got some stuff on there that I don't really want. So let's go into y equals and clear that. Stat plot, let's turn those off. OK, so we've got a, a blank screen in here. Uh, but there are already some pre-installed images, which are really cool to work with, um, already on there. They look um, not the best pixels on here because of the screen so big, but they actually are fantastic. Um, and we can transfer the, uh, those um, onto either the Smart View um, in the Emulator page, which I'm just getting to now, um, or I can do it to um, a handheld. So if I had a handheld here now, I could actually, which I have done, I put that into Calculator Explorer mode, and I do the same thing. Um, so what I've got here is I've just got a, a snowboarding image before. Um, I'm going to put it not onto, so if I want to put it onto my calculator, I'll just do drag and drop. It'll ask me where I want to save it. There's already five images stored, so I would choose a different one. Let's choose number six, and it was going to, it's going to send it to my calculator. So it sent it to my calculator, and now I can work with it on my calculator, and students can share it. Um, so I've seen teachers use this a lot um, in science with refraction, but I'm going to do it on the smart view instead, exactly the same. Just drag and drop it across. Where am I going to save it? Image six, send it across. And you can see how fast it is. And if I had more than one calculator connected at a time, then it would work, um, it would be a lot more efficient for me. Um, we now go into format again and change that background to my new one. I should have gone up. Why did I do that? Um, that's pre-installed, pre-installed. And there's the one I got. The pixels aren't great because it's quite a high resolution one. But let's run with that. Um, and there we go. Winter Olympics happening at the moment and a, a snowboarder going over a jump. Just a Google image that I've just dropped, dumped, saved onto the desktop. And you can see how Izzy's um, quick plot would work really well with this one as well. Really well. Um, anything you want to add to that, Izzy? No, I was just wondering, could you actually, um, is there any way that we could move the picture so it um, sits maybe lower That's down? That's a great question. Yeah. Up? I think we're so used to touch screens and grabbing things and moving things, you sort of, you feel that should be the case. Uh, obviously, it's not yeah. a touch screen, um, but I quite like that because I say to students, well, if you want to move this point, let's say, down to this person's foot, um, how are we going to do that? Well, we want to actually, and this is linked to what you're doing at the moment, students, with your um, transformations, we want to move it um, nine to the left and sort of down one. So if we go into window, what's that really doing? Well. On that, it's adding nine to the horizontal, really, okay, and adding nine to the vertical. Uh, sorry, adding nine to both horizontals. And on the Y, um, it's also adding one because we're putting one on the top. So this is the way um, I quite like students to think about it like this and moving it around. Um, and we can see now that there we go. It's where perhaps you want it to be. We can equally go into format. Uh, there's the grid lines that I talked to you about with Izzy, and you can change the grid, the grid color, but also you can change the axes if you couldn't see that very clearly. Not when I press arrow down, you won't. Orange, love it. Enter, graph, beautiful. There we go. What do you think, Izzy? Are you tempted to hit the snow? Yeah, it's fantastic. And I, what I love about that picture as well is that it actually goes below um, the x axis, and I think a lot of the quadratic. Um, I think I guess like the standard questions, they stop and it hits the ground again. And so it's nice to kind of have that, that it, the takeoff and landing point is different in this example. Fantastic. Cool. Well, I, I know that I, I would say this, but I think we've done a great job, Izzy. Um, just to finish off on the TI Australia website, um, my mum always said that self-praise was no recommendation, so sorry, mum. Um, go to senior curriculum and we can see that there's <laughs> loads of uh, resources for all the states. Um, notice I didn't go to the inspired one. Uh, that would be more for the IB, um, 
parts of WA, some parts of Queensland um, and Victoria. Sorry if I've missed anybody out. Uh, but I'm going to go to Senior Curriculum Inspired Inspirations, and from, we've got some Queensland stuff. That's going to be an added to, so that will also have non-CAS and K84 stuff. But here, the, the SA in Northern Territory, there's plenty of resources here, all free resources, already ready prepared lessons that hit a lot of the topics. Um, so, Izzy, Year 12, you're doing math methods, aren't you? I am. There we go. Uh, so when you get to integration, there you go. It's a fantastic um, activity produced by uh, Peter Fox um, on Solid Revolutions, using images um, and some nice uh, integration stuff. So there we go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so just to finish up, there's our images. There's the sites that we talked about. And we're on to any more last-minute questions. Um, please try and ask them. Um, Izzy's frantically replying to, to chat messages as we speak. Um, she works harder that now than uh, when I'm talking than uh, when she is. Um, so um, we'll try to answer them. And equally, if you've got any feedback, um, then it really is important to us to, to hear that, but also to guide future webinars. Um, the feedback at the end of this webinar will come to you um, simply onto your screen. It will automatically appear. Um, and please uh, send some of that through to us. Uh, we do listen to your feedback, um, both positive and constructive. Um, and so please fill in that post-webinar survey. And most importantly for all of us, uh, certificate, well, not most importantly, but sadly, uh, quite importantly, uh, we have to prove that we did some PD. And here's a certificate of attendance, which will be emailed to you in the next 48 hours, along with the link. Um, if you can put up my voice again, and or just cut to the bits where it is on the on-demand or YouTube versions <laughs> of the recording. Um, and we'll add any relevant documents, or if you ask us of any documents, we can add them to it as well. Um, so uh, if after tonight um, you do need any follow-up, please feel free uh, to phone or email uh, TI Australia um, or New Zealand. Uh, or if you're in America, um, phone TI America or just phone Australia to have a nice Aussie chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and that sadly brings us to the end. You can see that I'm giddy. Uh, thank you very much, Izzy, for everything you've shared with us tonight. Thanks very much, um, everyone. <laughs> I know that I and uh, I'm, I know the participants have really appreciated it. And thank you, one and all, um, for everything that you've done uh, to be here tonight, your contribution during the chat, um, and making this worthwhile. So thank you very much, and good night.